Hello and welcome to another one of my utterly diabolical videos. Um, so I'm going to be playing an Xbox One game. It's a game that you can currently download on the system and I believe you can also download the Xbox 360 version for free. Um, usual price is allegedly $9.99. Um, it is Forza Horizon 2 presents Fast and Furious. Um, and yes, I have done on my website a review of this. Um, if you want to check that out, the website is retrocreative.co.uk. Um, and also, over on my Retro Creative specific channel on YouTube, I did a kind of facts. It was a bit tongue in cheek. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm burping because I'm drinking beer over here. But yeah, um, did a little write up on this just uh, because why not? Um, but yeah, like I say, um, it. What the hell? Um, yeah, annoying stuff. Forgot how to make videos. Um, yeah, I did a little write up, is what I was saying. Um, but now we're going to actually just play the game and I'm going to show you it. Um, yeah, for £9.99, you're not going to buy this as a standalone game. Um, it's basically just like a demo. It's like somebody took a demo and added Fast and Furious to the title to make it more appealing. Um, I do find the load times are annoyingly long. I do find that on a lot of the the Xbox One digital downloads that load times which should be faster are actually slower. Um, Though to be honest, most games, well pretty much every game just installs to the hard disk nowadays. So technically it's just got shitload of times and uh, the non-physical copy thing has got no relevance. But yeah, it doesn't seem optimised very well. So first of all, I've unlocked all the cars, there's ten. Uh, we've got this Supra here, I mean I don't know whether this is in the new movie or what, but it's just a a plain Supra. Okay, it's been tuned up, it's faster, but it just looks like standard Supra. Um, then we've got these American cars that are just, who cares, um, and a modern day American Musk car that nobody cares about apart from Americans. Um, the Veyron, which is just the, it's like, yeah, it was the fastest production car, but it's not now, so please stop including it as an obligatory car in games. Um, there's this Maserati that I've never heard of before that's got a terrible name, Maserati Giblets or something. Um, there's this car that I vaguely do remember from the, the Fast and the Furious. Is it the one with the Volt and all that stuff? McLaren P1, probably because... McLaren paid for them to have a P1 in this or something, I don't know. Um, then we got the GTR, yeah it's a GTR, bit of an uninspired choice but solid. Then we got this Jeep Wrangler that's kind of armoured and shit. Um, I think that's possibly something from the new movie, possibly something from one of the old ones, I, I don't really remember. Uh, this is the Dodge Charger that um, Toretto likes to roll around in. Um, so, no, we're not going to leave the garage. We're going to pick a car and we'll pick the P1 because it's the only actual full on supercar in the game. <sighs> yeah, the GTR is almost supercar, but it doesn't do 200 mile an hour, so, uh, well, the production model doesn't anyway. So we're going to turn down and turn off the music. It's got new music um, over. Rah, rah. Um, it's got new music over original Forza Horizon 2, but there is only one 
radio station. And the storyline in this is kind of that you've come over whilst the festival's going on to like kind of acquire these cars by racing for pink slips and all that sort of stuff. Um, the main issue I have with this game, apart from the fact that it's just Forza Horizon 2 um, with like ludicrous. Yeah, your car, man. We're gonna use this car because I've never used it before. Um, yeah, my main issue is it's just too much like Forza Horizon 2. If it didn't have ludicrous in it um, and the car with the ball bars and shit on the front, the green one, can't remember what it is, um, you would be none the wiser. Um, it's still got all of the crowds and it just, it's been okay, it's possibly supposed to be set up with a kind of, in like a parallel side story that merges the two franchises but I don't know I would have liked to maybe see everything take place at night or something because I just associate like the the whole fast and the few I mean I know I know that the movies don't take place at night nowadays um, but a lot of the first movie you know the initial wow factor was the night scenes and the the illegal cruise and the illegal street racing it all all went off at night and then in the day it was like day job time um, Brian Spielner um, being a parts run around undercover cop type guy and all that stuff um, so yeah I would have liked to see it all take place at night just to differentiate it from normal Forza, it does have nitrous added to this um, edition of the game. Whoops, still got the uh, different viewpoints there. And you activate that with the R1 button, it makes your car go a bit faster. Um, it doesn't recharge in any way, which is more realistic than some of the silly systems you see in other games like drifting creates nitrous which doesn't make sense scientifically um, so yeah it's it's not enough to include nitrous to make this like a fresh new experience um, now don't get me wrong this is a good deal as a free game um, for 9.99 no chance this is basically a demo. The, you can complete the whole game in probably an hour and a half or something and then at the end um, it basically tries to sell you different versions of Forza Horizon 2. Um, I kind of think the names of it, the name of the game is a bit long winded as well, Forza Horizon 2 presents Fast and Furious. It's uh, yeah. And it also recycles um, these kind of events here, like the be the cargo plane type stuff. And we have to play in the charger, which is annoying because the charger handles like shit. Yeah, um, it's a great deal if you've never played Forza Horizon 2 or you've only ever played the demo um, because if you watch my um, video that I've done, I did a video on the demo because I was that impressed with the demo of that game. Then I bought the game and I, I've done probably a couple of videos on that as well. Um, enjoyed the shit out of the game. Uh, I completed the 
was called the, the, the festival twice and then got bored like when it comes to doing it a third time I was like you know what I'm sick of doing like the same races over and over again um, so yeah even getting this game free for me it's not that exciting even with the I'd say the, the Fast and the Furious stuff it, it seems irrelevant because it, it makes hardly any difference to the game um, it's a good download if you are an achievement hunter um, because the, the achievements are so easy to get I think there's only like one or two achievements left for me to get I don't know what they are, I assume one of them probably one of them is getting every achievement and then um, to get every achievement I need to uh, knock all of the board reward boards over I don't know why they're called reward boards and I don't know what the reward is um, probably just an achievement so uh, yeah so yeah I mean if you've, if you've got an Xbox One or a 360 um, even if you've kind of completed Forza Horizon 2 you might as well download it um, provided you've got enough space on your hard disk I sort of certainly wouldn't go delete anything from my uh, hard disk to fit this on I don't know to beat that plane. this is actually um, the last challenge this this is actually this isn't really a recycled challenge because it's a new one because I'm actually delivering this car to the cargo plane um, and that's like the final sort of mission so to speak in the game you also have the, the point system drifting and the getting scored for smashing into things but not actually crashing, just wrecking scenery. Um, but I don't see the point, there's no perks to unlock, um, you can go for kind of your personal vests and all that sort of stuff but it's pretty pointless because it's not got the same sort of RPG um, elements that the, the original game has. Um, and also you can't modify the cars which I mean I think that the cars are that's the most disappointing thing for me because the Fast and Furious movies have mainly been about modified cars um, in the later iterations it was more about the big the big set pieces, the big, big uh, action scenes but you know I would, I would have liked some uh, some modified cars, I would have liked to see the instead of a shitty white Supra, I'd like to see like the green and the orange Supra from the first game, uh, the one that gets blown up, and then the one that you build the dildos on the side and the man on the dildo and all that stuff, flying dildos. Um, but yeah, there's nothing really to get me excited um, about this game. I don't think it's a very good promotional tool. Um, for the movie either. It does remind you that the movie's out but it doesn't really get you hyped up for, for watching it. It's a bit it's a bit dull to be honest. But um, it's nice if you don't own the uh, the actual full game. Because if you are even thirty percent of the way to completing the original vanilla Forza of Horizon 2 uh, you will be bored shitless of that game um, it basically just recycles the same content you complete the game then you go through it again and complete it and then you realise that there's no real reward for completing it again other than earning more money and buying more cars uh, once you've got the best few cars in the game you know the cars that you want no real point playing it again so that's my stance on this but uh, it's worth a download if uh, you've never owned Forza Horizon 2
Alright.